This is Jeff Cooper coming to you a few hours before the open on Friday morning, January 25th. Do you know where the market's line in the sand is? I'm going to show you in this video. Like many suspects, Mr. Market is lured back to the scene of the crime. The S&P returned to the scene of that crime last Friday at 2675 right here. Connecting a trend line from the important October 29th low here and the November 23rd low here shows the breakdown on December 10th right here. From there a two-day retracement played out to a high of 2685 on December 12th right here. This is where the S&P tailed off, closing at 2650. From there, the market waterfalled into December 24th. Said another way, the December 10th breakdown signaled lower prices, but first, a squeeze played out. As I always say, the first mouse, the first signal, gets the squeeze. The second mouse, the second signal, got the cheese. Of course, unbeknownst to the street at the time, this 2650 early December breakdown point proved to be the midpoint of the entire bear leg down. Oftentimes, these breakdowns through well-defined support proved to be the midpoint of a move. Consequently, one can then anticipate where the low would occur, and that's exactly what played out. At that time, in late December, on December 24th actually, we stated when this thing turns it's going to be the Hulk. So far the S&P has rallied 330 points in four weeks. The Hulk indeed. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you how this 330 points ties in to where we are now before the end of this video. Interestingly, despite the newfound controversy over the idea that a large player slammed the market on a Christmas Eve thin volume market, as you can see, the geometry of the market for a low <clears throat> from the 2645, 2650-ish midpoint, <coughs> excuse me, played out to perfection. <coughs> The important thing to consider is that extending this trend line that we spoke about earlier that defined the early December breakdown struck at precisely 2675 last Friday's high. I call these extended trend lines live angles. They were important in the past but still come into play and come alive again when their angle is struck going forward, hence live angles. Since hitting this live angle, the S&P declined down to 26.13, right here, and has bounced back to hug this 26.45, 26.50 midpoint over the last two sessions. The cues, which I'm going to go to now, show a similar pattern. That's QLD, that's not what I want. Here we go. Okay, so here you can see another live angle on the cues connecting the um, November low and the early December low sees this breakdown and you had a retrace that back tested the live angle which failed leaving a large range um, outside down day which elicited the waterfall decline into December 24th and the cues back tested this live angle last Friday as well. <clears throat> so
So extending this same trend line creates a live angle which was back tested Friday in league with the pattern on the S&P. I think this 2675 to 2685 level on the S&P and the 165 166 region right here on the Qs is the line in the sand for the market. Here's my interpretation of the current structure. Both the daily Qs and the daily S&P went into the plus one minus two buy position on Wednesday just like they did on January 3rd. So here's my plus one minus two buy setup on January 3rd. You have why? Because you have two consecutive daily lower lows while the three-day chart is pointing up. Again the three-day chart is pointing up and Wednesday satisfied two consecutive lower daily lows. So the market is in a tug of war here at this inflection point. It is back tested an initial target uh, at the uh, this live angle in this region <coughs> and yet constructively bullishly <coughs> it's put in two consecutive lower daily lows satisfying my plus one minus two buy setup. While it would have been easy for the three-day chart to turn down with three consecutive lower lows yesterday, um, that three-day chart setup for a turn down now has to be recalibrated all over again as three consecutive lower daily lows are needed to satisfy such a turn down and that's impossible to do today. You need three consecutive lower lows so you have to rejigger the whole count. Now the three-day chart doesn't have to turn down but it seems in order with the market stretch and tagging a quick 50% retrace of the entire bear market leg down. With a clear five-way structure in the queues, one, two, three, four, five, back testing this live angle, and the market shrugging off Wilbur Ross's Robert Frost-like comment yesterday that a deal with China is miles, miles away, combined with the market shrugging off Intel's miss last night, the futures are up about 12 points as I um, as I talk the indication is that a test of last Friday's high right here is on the table this would create a second test of that aforesaid live angle interestingly if the S&P and the Q's trace out a slightly higher high then last Friday's high over the next few days, it could set up a soup Nazi sell signal. This is a pattern I um, created to identify test failures. How does it work? Well, a soup Nazi sell occurs when a new 20 day high is struck with a test of that high at least four days later but within the 20-day look back. Why this works is because many trend followers buy new 20-day highs and sell new 20-day lows. However, if a failure occurs from a new 20-day high, there is no soup for them, hence a soup Nazi sell. The purpose of the four-day interval is to guard against continuation moves. So that's price. What about time? This weekend is 360 degrees from the major January blow-off top in 2018. We are also 90 degrees this weekend from the important October 29th low on the S&P. So time, price, and pattern are lining up for a important potential turning point. I think we're in that topping process right now. And there are two scenarios for a correction. We could get an ABC two-step correction. Let's go to the S&Ps again. Show you what I'm talking about. So we could get an ABC two-step correction for a higher low. In other words, A, B, 
be or <clears throat> let me let me let me uh, correct that an a b c correction for a higher low above the december 24th low or if december marked the first leg down in a bear market and we are completing the secondary leg which <clears throat> we are at an attractive shorting opportunity as the presumption then would be new lows <clears throat> alternatively <clears throat> even if this is a uh, a correction high here a corrective rally high here we could get a higher low in a B wave and then rally up to say 2800 or even higher for an A B C this would be a larger B wave to this entire large A wave down from the September October highs. So let's make sure we're all clear on that again. One scenario is that this entire leg down from the September October highs is a large A wave and we could put in an A B C. So you can see that if we make a higher low and then if this region here marks some kind of a um, near-term top prior to a, a pullback, a deep pullback, that an <clears throat> ensuing high above this region, assuming this marks some kind of a high, could get <clears throat> the street bullish. Why? Because you'd have a higher low and a higher high and that could occur at exactly this bullishness <clears throat> that pattern could get people bullish at exactly the wrong time because that could be putting in a large B wave high prior to a vicious C wave decline which would take out these lows and go at least to 2200 and possibly 2135 ish which is the uh, 2000 <coughs> excuse me 15 May <coughs> 2015 top <coughs> so prior resistance should become new support if the S&P declines that low on the C wave decline let's take a look real quick at the um, the weekly cues since we looked at the dailies The three-week chart turned back up on the queues last week, right at that daily uh, live angle. If the primary trend is down, this turn-up of the three-week chart should define a high soon in terms of time and price. So caution is warranted. Interestingly, the, the uh, QQQ three-week chart turned down at the April low right here you can see three consecutive lower weekly lows right here and that perpetuated this strong rally this was a test a successful test of the February low taking out that circled low from April turned the three-week chart down on this week right here it's mid uh, mid December I think the week of the <coughs> December 17th and interestingly that although you slid lower that week marked the weekly closing low for the move down off the highs and then you had weekly train tracks straight down straight up <clears throat> and uh, and so now we have the three week chart back up and I can't help but wonder if we have a mirror image fold back with this low 
in the three week circle low in the three week uh, chart marking a low and possibly with the turn up in the three week chart now striking a high I can't help but wonder if the indiscriminate chasing yesterday in the semiconductor stocks like Xilinx and LRCX following uh, their earnings reflects a newfound complacency which contrarily indicates a peak in sentiment in tandem with price in this region of a peak. Now, <clears throat> let's go to the dailies for one sec. Often, waterfall declines play out from third lower highs. Here's the dip back to the daily cues, and you see one, two, three, and the waterfall decline in December occurred from a third lower high. However, going back to the weeklies now shows this line in the sand because now. The, this one, two, three is from the daily chart. However, now you have a possible third lower high on the weeklies right here. This is the first lower high on the weeklies where this two on the dailies is. This would be the second lower high on the weeklies. And this could be a third lower high on the weeklies. <clears throat> if so, then you could expect a severe drop, a significant drop, down to test this level. Is it possible we get an inverse head and shoulders bottom at this level? It sure is. But if that level breaks and the idea of an inverse head and shoulders or reverse head and shoulders goes out the window, expect a decline all the way down to this level. <clears throat> I want to show the S&P once more. I said we would show this before we end up here and I let you go <clears throat> remember this was a this is a 330 point move so far off the December low to last Friday's high the January decline January February decline right here interestingly was 340 points so another 10 point move which could give you a test of last Friday's high right at that breakdown level. Go to the da uh, dailies. A test of that level that fails could play out with our soup Nazi sell signal triggering. And again, remember that this price and pattern are all tying in to the one year cycle from late January last year and at 360 degrees ago in time and 90 degrees from the important late October low right here October 29th so 90 degrees later is this weekend January 29th and 360 degrees <coughs> from last January's high January 26th to 29th as well so this looks like the line in the sand time wise price wise and pattern wise and with that it with that I'll have to let you go and um, I appreciate your time thanks for listening have a great day trading